Today is new guitar day here at Worship Tutorials HQ. Not one, but two guitars arriving today. So I think I've only done one guitar unboxing video here at Worship Tutorials. And funny enough, I dropped the guitar in that video. I don't know if I've kept it on camera, but I did. So we're not gonna repeat that today. But you know, these videos are fun. And this box is sealed. I have not opened this up. This is a special one that we have not talked about much here. I don't think we've mentioned this guitar in a video at all. Something very special that a friend of ours has been working on. Two friends of ours actually collaborated together on this thing. Let's open it up, show you what we're talking about. Okay, so here's the case. Whenever you order a guitar from this particular manufacturer, you get one of these G&G &G cases. These things are primo, super high end, and he usually specs the case so that it matches the vibe of the guitar. So this one has like this uh, black faux carbon fiber um, sort of print and the gold hardware. Although the guitar does not have gold hardware, it is very cool indeed. We're about to all see it for the first time. I put a, a B cam up so you can get a better shot of the glorious reveal. Here we go. Opening the case for the first time. Slowly, slowly. I can't even see it. Oh, you can't see anything either. <laughs> Cause you got, you got paper on it. All right, here goes. First of all, you can see this mastery tremolo, the best in my opinion. That or Duesenberg, one of the two. Oh yes, look at this. Okay, this is what Shelton calls. By the way. Shelton Electric Instruments. Here it is. This is the guitar. This is a weird angle, but we're gonna roll with it. This is the GT, or the T style, which is the uh, Time Flight uh, Telebody style. This is the Time Flight GTX. This particular one with a mastery tremolo system. Let's get the box out of here. Let's get the case out of here so we can talk about the guitar. All right, so this is the uh, Shelton Electric. Here, I'll show it to you over here too. Shelton Electric Instruments uh, Time Flight, which is the T-style guitar, uh, GTX. That's this whole configuration. You've got two pickups with this kind of half pick guard thing. Uh, this one features a mastery tremolo, which in my opinion is like the best in the world. First impressions about, first of all, he aged this thing. He told us he went a little, he went a little extra with the aging, and man, it looks cool. Shelton's aging is so good. Um, it looks awesome. So uh, I'm gonna tune it up and play it. I'm gonna give you my just first gut impressions about this guitar, but I can tell you right now, just from feeling the neck, uh, his necks are like the best in the world, in my opinion. All right, it's tuned up, first strum. Man, the mastery is so good, and they stay in tune so well. All right, I'm a nut for setups, right? So it's like I made the whole, the whole setup course. So um, Shelton is a great setup guy. Uh, he does, you know, a lot of he does a lot of that kind of stuff in his shop as well. So I can tell you just by eyeballing it, this neck relief, pretty much perfect. Um, the way you check this, by the way, fret the first fret. Uh, fret somehow on the last fret. I just kind of use my arm and then you should have about 12 thousandths of an inch clearance between the string and the seventh fret. This neck is a little straight. Uh, you can see that there's a little relief in it. You might want a little more relief but if guitars, it, it, that's a preference thing. So some players like them straighter than others. Uh, I can tell just by looking at it, the action on this thing is really low. It's very super playable. A few things about this guitar. Lambertone's Ristrettos. The Bradford Mitchell's favorite pickups. These are actually Bradford's Ristrettos that he sent to Shelton to uh, put in this guitar. So I bet you can guess who this guitar is for, Bradford. You're gonna have to come steal it. Take it out of my cold, dead hands because 
This thing's awesome. I'm gonna play it for you in a bit. It's super lightweight, which I love in a guitar. Um, the the uh, the aging he does, he doesn't really do much to the back of the neck. There actually is some finish checking. It doesn't feel old and beat up, the back of the neck. That's, that's a Shelton thing. Other people who do aging on guitars will um, will do more aging to the back of the neck. Some players like that, some don't. I'm sure he could if you wanted him to, if you reached out to him to build a guitar. Uh, all of the, the, the hardware on this thing, except for this piece right here, is black. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but this whole mastery thing, depending on the lighting, that's black. It's like blacked out hardware. So that's black. This is chrome. The, the piece that the strings go into is chrome. The saddles are chrome, but this, this whole bridge assembly piece underneath the saddles is black. Pickup covers are black. The, uh, the switch tip and the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the knobs here are black. Very cool. Tuners are black. These are Godo locking tuners. Uh, black with the silver, you know, locking mechanism. Really, really cool aesthetic on this thing. Brad is a huge fan of white guitars. Uh, and Shelton wanted to do something, do something cool for him. So you're gonna see this guitar in some worship tutorials videos. I have a feeling this is gonna shoot up to the top of Bradford's favorite guitars list. Pretty quick, this thing is nice. Guitar number two, it's actually two days later after I recorded the Shelton unboxing. Uh, FedEx did not get this package to me when it was supposed to be delivered, but I got it nonetheless. I've worn the same outfit for continuity's sake. Let's open it up, here we go. All right, so we have a box inside of a box. That's nice, this tells you what's in here. This is the guitar that we ordered in the Sunday vlog. When did I upload that? I don't know. When I film these things, when I upload these things, I never can keep straight when what is happening. But uh, ordered it over a week ago. A week ago from Sunday. Today is Wednesday. Finally got it. Okay, here we go. I'm impressed. Packaging for Squire. Oh wow, they tell you the playability specs from the uh, from the setup. All right, here we go, let's look at it. Lightweight, which I like. I haven't played a Squire in a long time. So I am very anxious to try this out. This is a sharp looking guitar, I really like that. Um, the neck feels really good too. The fretboards are is rolled over. I'm gonna get this box out of the way. We can just talk about it. Initial impressions. First of all, you gotta get this stuff off. So, Squire, a uh, classic vibe, 60s Strat. Um, I will say, 
I'm impressed with the just the overall vibe, fit, and finish. The paint on this thing is really cool. This is Lake Placid Blue. It's got like some sparkle to it. The fretboard is not rosewood anymore. I'm not exactly sure. Laurel, they call it, what it is. Uh, this appears, I don't know if this is maple or if it's a different material. It looks like roasted maple. I don't think that it's roasted maple. I think it's just tinted, but it does look nice. I like that the, uh, you know, the maple headstock is um, not like bleached white looking. Uh, I enjoy this sort of aged looking, tinted looking, uh, you know, wood. So I'm gonna tune this up and play it a little bit and just give you some impressions about playability right out of the box. All right, I tuned it up and I found the uh, some more of the case candy that you get with this stuff. Uh, you get the Allen wrenches for adjusting the truss rod and adjusting the saddles. I'm sure I'll be putting these to use, although I have to say it feels pretty good. I'm gonna do the check again, remember. First fret, uh, fret on the first fret, fret on the last fret, and you want 12 thousandths of an inch of clearance under the seventh fret which is about the size of like a standard business card thickness, if you want to think of it that way. This looks pretty good. It might have just a little too much relief, uh, but really close. And I have to say, the playability on this is, is great. We're playing that song this weekend, so we gotta learn the, the part for I always feel like that's This Is Amazing Grace by Phil Wickham, but it's not. Your Love Awakens Me. It's like the same as This Is Amazing Grace as far as key, feel, vibe. I have to say, super impressed uh, with the playability of this guitar. There are a few things that I know right off the bat I'll be doing to it besides, you know, the full setup uh, that I would do with any guitar that I get. Uh, first of all, this is interesting this is at a weird angle um so when it comes back it rubs on the guitar is that is that normal for squire uh it comes out of the bridge at like an angle which is nice because it puts it right here where where you want it but like when you're when you're moving it around it rubs against the, the bridge of the guitar one or the the body of the guitar i don't like that i don't know if that's supposed to be that way i will say though the bridge on this guitar is is pulled down to the body. Uh, I like the bridge on a Strat to float a little bit so you can pull it up or down. To do that, adjustment's really easy. You just pull the cavity off the back and there are there's a claw arm under here and there are screws in it and how tight they're screwed in uh, adjusts the tension of the springs which pulls the bridge back more. So you can set it to uh, to float or not. I like to set it to float, so does Bradford. Another thing about this is the edges of these frets are a little sharp. So um, they're not poking out, like they're not sprouting out of the fretboard, but they are uh, sharp and the frets themselves are not very smooth. Easy fix, uh, if you, you can practice on a on a guitar that's not very precious to you, I would suggest, but you can take fret files and uh, round these over and then sand them down, smooth them down. I'm definitely gonna do that. So this thing is gonna play like butter. That's one of the things that will set apart a high-end guitar from a budget guitar because that takes man hour. Like you have to do that by hand and it takes time and it takes a skill set. So um, that's one, if you buy a you know $2,500 guitar versus a $400 guitar, that's part of what your 25 or two, $2,100 are going to. But if you know how to do it yourself, you can make any guitar that you own, unless it's put together poorly. You can make most any decently made guitar play like the most expensive guitars that you can imagine. So I'm gonna do that. It looks like the fretboard needs some oil. I will, I will do that. Uh, the strings feel kind of gross. I don't know, these feel like lighter gauge. These might be nines, I'm not sure. Um, they don't feel like very high quality strings. Easy fix, um, but the bones of this guitar, I have to say, uh, color me impressed with the Squire. Classic vibe. It's going out of tune a little bit, but that's what happens with brand new strings, so.
Sunday vlog that we titled Brian Buys Another Guitar. This is the guitar I bought. Um, and I did buy this with my own money. Uh, Squire did not send this to me. And we do have some plans for, I should say Fender didn't send it to me. We have plans for this thing. So uh, like I said, we're going to review it in its stock form. We'll make a dedicated video for that. Um, while the pickup height is way off, they're pretty low. I'll fix all of it. Maybe I'll make a video about how I set this thing up. Um, so the, uh, the the plan is to do a review of this guitar, and then uh, we're I'm gonna I'm gonna do the little things that I talked about: polish the frets, round over the fret ends, so they're gonna play like butter. Uh, then we are gonna send this to 920D. Talk to Jimmy at 920D, who's become a friend of us of ours here at Worship Tutorials. They are going to trick this thing out. So. I, when, when we did the Epiphone video, he did a bunch of stuff that I had no idea was coming. So uh, what I'm gonna probably ask for um, from them, he's like, yeah, just let me know what you want. Um, I don't know, let, let me know in this video, what kind of pick guard color should go with this? Perloid would look good. This is like an either an aged white or mint. I think it's aged white maybe. Uh, I like this pick guard color, so I might ask him to keep this color, or maybe just keep this guard. Uh, but they, well, no, they'll have to do a different one. They do a, they call it a seven-way mod, where you get a toggle switch that turns the neck on at any position. I want that mod, and I'll probably also ask them to upgrade the electronics, which is a, a pretty simple, fairly inexpensive mod that you can do on these things. So, uh, locking tuners would be cool, just for you know, ease of use, but these tuners seem like they're gonna do the job just fine. The nut, uh, while I'm sure is not a high-end material, seems to be okay. It's probably plastic, so you could upgrade the nut to bone or tusk, and that would uh, give you an upgrade. But Curtis Lamberton is supplying a set of Lambertones triple shots to put in here. We're gonna see what those are all about. 